Thank you all for being here. I think you are going to take away a lot after hearing Shannon Brooks, our speaker. He came, well, he traveled on Tuesday for about eight hours to get to us, so he's been doing a lot of these talks and they're fabulous. I've heard several of them already. And uh, he is one of the founders of Thomas Jefferson Education. He's been doing it for about 20 years. He uh, has been doing it with his own children. Of course, he has six children. And uh, he has a nice little list of degrees. He's, um, he's got a, a degree in religious studies and a master's in education and a doctorate in constitutional law. So, and he was also president of George Wythe College for um, a time as well. And so he has a lot of good things to share with us. Okay, let's see. We have, uh, are, are there any, I, I know we've got one certified teacher here. Any, any other? Uh, certified. Okay. I'm certified. Certified. Certifiable. Yeah. Okay. Certified. Everybody qualifies now. No, okay. certified. Okay. Oh, you are too. <laughs> so, so let me ask, what, what are your expectations here tonight? What, you, you've come for a reason. What, why do you think you're here? Because I, I know why I'm here, and it involves Amway, but... Um, <laughs> tell me why you're here. Tell me why you're here. Yeah. Well, just to learn something new and, and any kind of input um, that I can obtain from anyone for homeschooling, it's just always great. Okay, great. Well, you're here because you were told to be here. <laughs> yes. Why, yeah, we heard here. that story. Yeah. Okay. I'm actually here too. Um, I've got a 15 and a 14 and a 6 and a 4 right around there. And, uh, we're still formulating how we're homeschooling, and uh, we've got one that's doing really well, my older son, and my 14-year-old, she's struggling, and so we want to find more tools to help okay. her succeed. Great. Who else? Yeah. Well, um, Christine gave me this book, and just uh, reading through it the other night, I was so touched by it because I remembered as a kid my little sister going through the public school, and she didn't fit the mold. Yeah. and how it devastated her at one point. Yeah. And so I'm very interested in this method, methodology of teaching, and I think it's wonderful. And just now coming out of college myself at the age of almost 54, I can see um, how poor it is, ripping us through textbooks so quickly that we're not really absorbing anything just to take right. a test right. and get a degree sure. and say we're educated. And so I would like to be um, a better educator of myself and become more involved in a group that's reading classics that would give me the ability to discuss them and to develop myself at my age uh, more than the last three years in college have obviously done for me as much as I did enjoy the experience. Yeah. I'd also like to just be a better mentor to all people and children that uh, I come in contact with. And I think reading through this that uh, I'm very interested in it one and more. I, and as a college professor, I just like to like to suggest that, that you might want to work on being a little more confident in your opinions. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Yes, but we started most of the discussions. No, that's okay. That's great. That's great. Okay. Yes. Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Yeah
do I have some expected returns? And if I, am I getting those returns? Those are questions you ask yourself when you do this. And so my question is, is are we getting our bang for our buck in the system we have today? That's the question. Well, you do, I've done a quite a bit of research on this, and there's a number of different organizations you can look at, and, and I won't bore you with all that. But the question, or the, 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 the resolution I came to studying all this was, you know, basically all these different places say one thing. They all say that we have heavy, or moderate to heavy educational concerns in America. We've got some serious problems, and the average American isn't aware of these. We just, you know, we have a school system, so you put your kids in, and they graduate, and everybody's happy. Well, it doesn't actually turn out that way. One report uh, uh, talks about the fact that we have uh, United States high school students are engaged in a lot of international testing. A lot of different groups are doing it. Typically, there's 25 to 30 uh, first world countries who are all engaged, developed countries who are all engaged in this testing. For the last decade, the United States has come in in the bottom 25% consistently. And, and all of this. Now, you read the press, and when the results come out, they'll say, oh, Americans are improving. I've read the results. I've looked at the results. It's, they're lying. I'm sorry. They're not lying. They just can't read. Uh, because it's not what the test results say. You know, it's, they're tweaking it somehow. So, so it's a real problem. Um, but I, when I first read this stuff, I was like, you know, I don't know. It can't be that bad. So I started looking at high school graduation rates. And I found out some information. It's kind of interesting. If you want your kids to be in the highest districts that have the highest graduation rates, send them to Mesa, Arizona. They have a 77% graduation rate there. That means out of every 100 kids that start in the high school, 77 come out with a degree. Okay? Um, then you start looking around and, wow, it gets a little crazy. 77% Seattle. Excuse me, that, that was Mesa. 67% Seattle. 57% um, Boston. Now, now, put it in perspective. For every 100 kids that go into the school system in Boston, 57 come out with a diploma. What does that mean? It means 43%, 43 kids that are having are not coming out with a diploma. What do you think it is in Nevada, guys? 43% in Nevada. 35% in Baltimore. Detroit has 25% graduation rate, which means they have a 75% default rate, 75% dropout rate. Where was that Baltimore? That was Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. Uh, there's another organization that, that goes around the country and it looks at, at educational programs by state. The last report they put together just three months ago was Oklahoma. They found that in Oklahoma, one out of four high school students could tell you that George Washington was the first president of the United States. That means three out of four can't tell you that. That's a problem. <clears throat> There's another organization called the National Adult Literacy Survey, and they survey uh, hundreds of thousands of Americans once a decade um, to see what, what, you know, where we are in terms of literacy. And in 1993 and in 2003, I compared the results from both of those periods, and there was a slight decline. The, the, the rates I'm going to give you was from 93, so understand that it's actually worse than what I'm telling you, but I wanted to at least put the best foot forward. Um, in 1993, they came to the conclusion that, that um, from 16-year-old on up, 40 million Americans, or about 21% of this country, are completely illiterate. 